So today we will continue with our class on nonlinear pharmacokinetics. Last class we discussed about what is the difference between linear pharmacokinetics and nonlinear pharmacokinetics. So when some with some drugs, what happens is that when you increase the dose of that particular drug or or giving it for a long period of time, that is chronic medications, can lead to deviations from the linear pharmacokinetic profile, which is observed with single low doses of the same drug. Okay, so at low dose, a drug, a single low dose of the drug may follow a linear pharmacokinetics. But when you increase the dose or, uh, or for cro during chronic medications, there is a, a probability that the uh, nonlinear pharmacokinetics is seen. It is also termed as dose-dependent pharmacokinetics. An example is when a dose of phenytoin is increased by 50% in a patient from 300 milligram per day, to 450 milligram per day, what happens is that the average steady state concentration may increase as much as tenfold. So when you increase the dose of this drug from 300 milligram per day to 450 milligram, you can see that the steady state plasma concentration of the drug increases by tenfold. So this kind of dramatic increase in concentration is due to the non-linear pharmacokinetics of phenytoin. So for these drugs, that, that is the drugs having non-linear kinetics or dose-dependent kinetics or saturation kinetics as it is called, the kinet pharmacokinetic parameters such as clearance of the drug, then volume of distribution, half-life, all these may vary depending on the administered dose. Actually, additionally, different doses of these drugs may not result in parallel plasma concentration versus time profile, which is expected for drugs with linear pharmacokinetics. That is, the drugs having linear pharmacokinetics, the, if you plot the graph of the plasma concentration versus time, even though you may change the dose, the pharmacokinetic profiles will overlap, they will superimpose. But not so with the nonlinear pharmacokinetics. So, for drugs with nonlinear metabolism, the initial decline in the plasma concentrations may be slow at higher doses compared to that after administration of lower doses. We can see a graph here. Uh, you see the simulated plasma concentration versus time profile after IV administration of three different doses of a drug. For example, we discussed about phenytoin. So if you give it in 10 milligram, 100 milligram, 500 milligram, you can see how the uh, pharmacokinetic profile, uh, how the graph is looking. The linear decline is uh, there with the lower doses. As the dose increases, it is becoming curvy linear, non-linear. So the pharmacokinetic <laughs> parameters of phenytoin, that is the volume of distribution, um, of uh, 50 milliliters Vmax of 500 milligram per day and KU of um, 4 milligram per liter. That is the amount of drug expected and change in the urine, the rate constant KU, were used for simulation of the uh, this particular graph. So in nonlinear pharmacokinetics at higher doses, you can see that the linearity is uh, changing. So there are the several causes for this kind of nonlinear pharmacokinetics. It may be in the case in absorption. Uh, we discussed in the last class the various uh, causes of nonlinearity. It may be occurring during the ADME, that in absorption, it affects the bioavailability and rate of absorption. In distribution, the VD is affected, while in metabolism and excretion, the pharmacokinetic parameters like hepatic clearance and renal clearance are affected. So some of the causes for the nonlinear pharmacokinetics may be saturable transport in the gut wall, and as seen with riboflavin, gabapentin, dopa, or in intestinal 
metabolism. Similarly, drugs with low solubility in the GI, but uh, when you give it at high doses, it may result, uh, so it may be a dissolution rate limited uh, step. For example, for Grisiofar, we discussed the other day. This kind of thing, uh, situations can lead to uh, non-linearity in the absorption. Or if the carriers which carry the drug across the uh, GIT are saturated, naturally uh, it leads to um, increase in the drug across. So the drug is not moving across. So that leads to non-linearity. Naturally, the plasma drug concentrations will be affected. Similarly, in distribution, uh, saturation kinetics can be observed if the plasma protein binding is saturated or the tissue sites are saturated or cellular uptake, CSF transport. In all these uh, cases, saturation may occur with these following drugs which are seen. Similarly, in renal elimination also, we see that active secretion, tubular reabsorption, change in urinary pH may occur with different kinds of different uh, drugs as given here. So these are some of the causes. It may be due to, uh, in metabolism, if the metabolism is saturable or there is cofactor or enzyme limitation or enzyme induction, metabolite inhibition, in case of certain drugs as given here, we can observe the nonlinear pharmacokinetics. So what happens is when you change the dose of the drug, uh, the uh, it, uh, the linearity is not seen in the curve of the plasma concentration versus time. Similarly, in biliary excretion also uh, can be seen. We have discussed this in the previous class, the causes of nonlinearity. Today, our topic of discussion will be mycalis Mendon equation and the uh, various situations, uh, what, uh, what, how we have to do to estimate the Km and Vmax. So coming to michaelis mendon equation, uh, we know that the rate of metabolism or the rate of elimination, in case metabolism is the only pathway of elimination. So we know that elimination basically consists of metabolism and excretion. However, uh, the, if metabolism is the only pathway of elimination, so the rate of met metabolism or the rate of elimination can be defined by this michaelis mendon equation. And it is given by this equation, uh, the rate of decline in the drug concentration with time is equal to the maximum rate of metabolism Vmax into the drug concentration divided by the michaelis constant Km uh, plus again the drug concentration. So this is a, a very significant equation which is used to define non-linear pharmacokinetics. So the rate of metabolism, you know, when a drug is absorbed, distributed, metabolized, and excreted. So the uh, rate of metabolism or the rate of elimination will affect the plasma drug concentration. You know, when the metabolism occurs or elimination occurs, what is happening? There is decrease in the plasma drug concentration because the drug is getting eliminated. So that decrease in plasma drug concentration can be related to some terms such as the product of Vmax into C divided by Km plus C. So there are three situations related to this uh, Km and C. In, uh, so what is Km? That is the michaelis mendon constant. The unit of Km is the same as that of concentration. So the Km is the concentration producing half of the uh, Vmax. In this particular situation, we can see uh, that when Km equals to C, what happens to this particular term? Uh, so the equation becomes minus dc by dt equals Vmax into C divided by 2C because Km is now equal to C. And uh, so when you cancel the C in the numerator and denominator, you can say that the rate process is half of the maximum rate when Km is equal to C. So minus dc by dt will be equal to Vmax divided by 2. But when Km is much, much greater than C, what happens? 
uh, you can regard the situation in which C is neg negligible. Hmm? So the equation reduces to minus DC by DT into v, v max into C divided by K. So this equation now looks like that of a first order elimination of a drug where Vmax by Km can be considered to be the elimination rate constant Ke. So the, for a first order rate constant equation also, this, is, this equation is, it's family, you, you, um, you might be familiar with this equation, my, minus dc by dt equals Ke into uh, c. So in, uh, here you can regard Vmax by Km as equal to the elimination rate constant. That means the drug concentration in the body this, that results from usual dosage regimens of most drugs is well below the KM of the elimination process. And when KM is much lesser than C, what happens? That means C is greater here. So you, KM is negligible. So the equation becomes minus DC by DT equals V max into C divided by C. So here again, you cancel the C in the numerator and in this situation, the rate of change of uh, concentration of the drug equals to Vmax. That means the rate process occurs at a constant rate Vmax. So it is similar to the equation which describes a zero order process. So now it is independent of the concentration of the drug. So in long, so you can see that if you plot a graph of change in concentration of drug time against uh, the concentration term, you can see here that um, what happens, the, the initial part is a first order uh, rate at low doses, like the system follows a, drug follows a first order kinetics. Now as at intermediate doses, you can see that linearity is going and it's a mixed order kinetics. While at high doses, you can observe a zero order kinetics. This is a graphical representation of the michaelis mendel equation. So mixed order kinetics is something in between the first order and zero order kinetics. So uh, we can uh, describe different pharmacokinetic parameters such as clearance, half-life, time taken for the drug to reach the steady state concentration. For such kind of capacity limited drugs or uh, drugs exhibiting non-linear pharmacokinetics. So when you increase the dose, uh, normally uh, it results in more than proportional increase in AUC or CSS. This is because the clearance of the drug decreases with an increase in dose of plasma concentration as in, indicated by this following equation. So clearance equals V max into C divided by Km plus C. So this is the value for the clearance. So we need to know the various pharmacokinetic parameters. So you can describe in nonlinear kinetics Cl by this particular equation. And you can also describe half-life. Half-life is inversely related to the clearance. So the apparent half-life of the drug will be longer at higher doses or plasma concentrations in case of nonlinear pharmacokinetics. That means the higher the dose, the longer will be the half-life. And more longer will be longer will be the time taken to reach the steady state. So Usually in linear kinetics, the pharmacokinetic parameters do not change. But the thing to be noted is in nonlinear pharmacokinetics, the clearance depends on Vmax, uh, as you've seen earlier. And also the T half is inversely related to the clearance. Clearance is the rate at which the drug is removed or eliminated from the Blood. So uh, if the clearance is less, naturally the drug will stay for a longer time. So higher the dose, no longer will be the half-life of the drug and time taken to reach the steady state. So we can estimate the values of Km and Vmax. Okay, so what is Km? It is the michaelis mendel constant and uh, Vmax is uh, the, uh, we have to estimate these particular 
terms. How can we find out the values? You can uh, find it out from the plasma drug concentration versus time data collected after IV bolus administration of the drug having nonlinear uh, kinetics. So if you, uh, what is the equation, michaelis menten equation minus change in concentration of the drug with time depends on Vmax into C divided by Km plus C. If you integrate this particular equation and convert it to the log to the power of base 10, you can get this equation log C equals log C0 plus C0 minus C divided by 2.303 into Km minus V max divided by 2.303 into K. So if you consider a semi-log plot, what is a semi-log plot? Usually we plot plasma drug concentration versus time, but the curve, you may get a curvilinear graph. So we are plotting uh, one part, the y-axis as the log, log of the plasma drug concentration versus Time. So in a uh, linear pharmacokinetics, you usually get a straight line graph, but here you can see the, uh, in, as in the case of a drug, which is given as an IV bolus and having non-linear elimination fitting to one compartment kinetics, the terminal uh, linear portion, uh, you can find the slope. The slope will be equal to minus Vmax divided by 2.303 km. And if you extrapolate this, you can get the y-intercept uh, log c naught. this part. And uh, this is the actual log c naught. So um, a semi-log plot of c versus t. That is the this particular semi-log plot, log c versus um, t. Uh, will give a curve. And the terminal portion of the curve is uh, linear. And that linear portion, you know, straight lines will have a slope. The value of the slope can be given by minus Vmax divided by 2.303 km. So when Bragg extrapolated uh, to time zero, it will give the y-intercept. When Bragg extrapolated, you can get this particular y-intercept. And the uh, equation uh, that describes the line can be written as log c equals log C naught minus V max by 2.303 dot km into km. This is an equation of a straight line, y equals mx plus c. So what is y? The log c can uh, is the y-axis. And uh, what is um, mx? You can see the, the slope uh, can be regarded as the uh, as v max minus v max divided by 2.303 km. So this part can be regarded as the slope. Um, and the c um, km, we can, yeah, you can see again the km can be obtained from the above equation and v max can be calculated by substituting the value of km in the slope. So you can see this log plasma drug, log of plasma drug concentration versus time gives a terminal linear segment and uh, with a slope of minus Vmax divided by 2.303 km. And here uh, it is the beginning of the first order kinetics and you can see this, you can extrapolate this to get the y-intercept, this particular terminal linear segment. So from the, why, why we do this kind of graphical method, find the values of Vmax and Km. So if you know the initial uh, plasma drug concentration, hmm, or, and if you know the value of the slope, you can substitute uh, to get the remaining values. So when a drug is administered as a constant rate IV infusion, or in a multiple dosage regimen, the steady state concentration CSS, uh, is given in terms of the dosing rate. So now you can uh, relate the dosing rate or the do we I discussed in the previous classes about dosage regimen and the rate at which we do the dosing. So that dosing rate will be equal to the product of the uh, plasma drug concentration at steady state levels uh, into the total clearance of the so the dosing, we have to decide what dose to give.
based on the steady state level of the drug, plasma drug concentration and steady state, and based on the clearance that is occurring, the rate at which the drug is getting eliminated in per unit time, how much ml of the fluid is freed of the, or of the blood is freed of the drug. So uh, when uh, D or the dosing rate equals R0, uh, the drug, it will be equal to R0 when the drug is administered as a zero order IV infusion. You know, at, in an IV infusion, we allow the uh, infusion to occur, the drug to enter at a constant rate. So it can be regarded as a zero order reaction. So at steady state, the dosing rate equals to the rate of decline um, which or uh, rate of decline is due to the elimination and this is due to a single capacity limited process for example metabolism then the dosing rate can be regarded as uh, Vmax into CSS divided by Km plus CSS. So if you plot a value of the steady state plasma concentration against the dosing rate, um, you can get this kind of a curvilinear uh, graph and uh, that uh, maximum rate is given by the Vmax and you can uh, extrapolate it to get half of the uh, maximum rate Vmax by 2 and you can also extrapolate it to the uh, y-axis to get the michaelis menden constant Km for that particular drug. So there are graphical methods by which we can estimate the Km and Vmax in three different ways. So why we need to find this Km and Vmax, uh, why we do all this kind of calculations, we need to know what is the dose to be given, what is the rate at which the dose is to be given. And only when the drug reaches the steady state, which, is, which will happen in phi half-life. So the half-life also you need to know. Because after phi half-lives, usually the drug reaches the steady state. Similarly, you need to know the total clearance so that, that you will know how the drug is eliminating. So all these pharmacokinetic parameters are related and uh, we need to know to decide what is the dosage regime schedule, how to adjust the dose based on these parameters. So there are three graphical methods for estimating the michaelis menten constant Km and Vmax or the uh, in, in three different ways. One is using the Weaver Burke plot or the Klotz plot. So here you can assume that the dosing rate is equal to Vmax into CSS divided by Km plus CSS. So uh, we can take the reciprocal of this uh, equation to get the equation, this equation. So if you take the reciprocal of this particular equation, uh, dr will be one by dr. And uh, then this part will be in the numerator, Km plus CSS and the Vmax into CSS will be in the denominator. So when you split the terms and write, you can write Km divided by Vmax into CSS plus again CSS divided by CSS into Vmax. So since both terms have numerator and denominator have CSS in common, this cancelled from here. So this equation remains as one by Vmax. So this is again, uh, we, you see, we can find uh, related to the equation of a straight line. So you can see here this part, a straight line has an equation y equals mx plus c. So the y part will be 1 by dr. You can see in this graph the y, y, uh, y axis is 1 by the dosing rate. And what is the x axis? 1 by uh, CSS or one by the steady state uh, plasma drug concentration. You see here y equals mx plus c. So this part is uh, the slope. So uh, x x axis is one by CSS, and the uh, y intercept will be the c. That is uh, one by v max. You can see in the. Graph. 
graph. So the y in, the y axis is one by dr, which is shown in this graph here, and the x axis is y equals mx plus c. So m, uh, m is km by vmax and x will be 1 by css, which is again shown here as the x-axis. And um, plus c, c is the y-intercept. So that is again given here, the y-intercept 1 by vmax. So this equation is a linear equation where you are plotting 1 by dr in the y-axis, 1 by dosing rate in the y-axis against 1 by CSS or the steady state plasma drug levels in the x-axis, having the y-intercept 1 by Vmax and slope km by uh, Vmax. So, so from the graph, you can, uh, using the graph of the line weaver Burke or plots plot, you can estimate the values of km and Vmax at steady state concentration of the drug. There is another plot which you can use called a Hans uh, Wolf plot. Here again, this equation uh, Cm by dc into dt equals Km by Vmax plus Km by Vmax is considered. So here again, this part of the equation, the left part, it is similar to y equals mx plus c. So here y is the cm by dc dt, this part, and uh, mx, so the slope is 1 by vmax, which is m, and x is cm, which is given down here in the x-axis, plus km by vmax, which is the y-intercept. You can see the line is intercepting at the y-axis at this point, which is given by this value. So using this particular plot also graphically, you can find out what are the values of Km and Vmax. So why we are using these graphical plots? We are trying to find the values of Km and Cmax using this because we will know the other values like what is the plasma, what is the dose given, what is the plasma drug concentration at a particular time. So we can know those things. Uh, we already will know. If you take the blood samples and analyze it, you will know what is the plasma drug concentration as a, at a particular time. Then you can keep plotting the graph and you can find the value of CSS. So now this is another plot, the, the wolf August stinson hofstie plot. It is a plot again of DC by DT in the y-axis. As from, again, you can see another equation here, which is similar to the equation of a straight line, y equals mx plus c. So uh, again here, dc by dt is regarded as the uh, y-axis, and uh, dc by dt divided by cm is regarded as the x-axis, this part. So the uh, m slope will be minus km, and vmax will be the uh, y-intercept. So you can use a direct linear plot to estimate the Km and Vmax at steady state concentration of a drug at different dosing rates. Imagine we are using a dosing rate D1, DR1, hmm? dosing rate DR1 and a dosing rate DR2. So you can see here what is the steady state plasma drug concentration uh, for this particular dosing rate and also for the second dosing rate, what are the steady state plasma drug concentrations can be seen. So you can uh, have a direct linear plot for estimating the values of Km and Vmax at steady state concentrations of a drug given at different dosing rates. So here you are plotted DR against uh, Km to this side and so you can see, you can get the value of Km from this particular area and you can extrapolate to get the value of Vmax in the y-axis and Km in this particular x-axis. So when you consider the graph, a pair of CSS, uh, that is uh, CSS1, steady state con plasma drug concentration for the dosing rate, first dosing rate and for the second dosing rate, can be obtained with two different dosing rates, DR1 and DR2. So the point CSS1 and DR1 are joined to form a line. 
you can see this particular line is formed by joining this dosing rate one and steady state concentrate plasma drug concentration at that particular dosing rate. Similarly, you can get another line when you join the dosing rate two and CSS two. The point where the two lines intersect each other is extrapolated on the dosing rate to obtain V max. So you can see we, this line, the point where these two lines meet is extrapolated to the X, Y axis to get V max and to the X axis to get AM. Okay, so that's about the direct linear plot. So these, uh, we have discussed about the various methods hmm, to find Km and Vmax. So let's just go through the slides once again. In the last class, we already discussed the causes of non-linearity and non-linear pharmacokinetics is also called dose-dependent pharmacokinetics. Normally, if you give uh, the, if you change the dose, the uh, pharmacokinetic parameters do not change or the plasma drug concentration versus time profile is superimposed in linear kinetics. But in non-linear kinetics, that is not the case. Like one example we discussed, when you increase the dose of enitoin, what happens? The st average steady state plasma drug concentration will increase by tenfold. This can be due to several reasons like uh, saturation of the carrier systems, for example, it is the different reasons are given here. When, the, when there is saturation, saturable transport in the gut wall or intestinal metabolism, that means there are not enough, when the drug is given at a particular dose, it may be carried across the membrane by carriers. So when the carriers are saturated, there is no longer carrier to take the drug across. So naturally the drug is getting concentrated uh, on one side of the, uh, and similarly in distribution and elimination also, this kind of uh, nonlinear pharmacokinetics may be seen. This is also called saturation kinetics, or it may occur when the carrier mediated systems or enzymes are saturated. And there is this Michaelis Menden equation to describe this kind of saturable process. We discussed the three different situations related to the uh, Km and Vmax, the Michaelis Menden constant and maximum rate of metabolism. And we also discussed the uh, ways to find out the Km and Vmax by using different kind of, uh, kinds of plots, graphical methods and equations. So, um, for example, the line weaver Berg plot, the Hans Wolf plot, and the wolf Augustin Hosty plot. So, we, we, what we do is everywhere we are considering